all the talk about conferentry alignment has centered around the Pac-12, the Big 12, those two conferences going at each other, trying to say who's taking whose teams, who's adding who, and all this mess. You've heard stories about the ACC now with Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina not being happy with the current media rights deal, not being happy with the current revenue structure, yada, yada, yada. But you've not heard a whole lot about the SEC lately. That is until now. The SEC is making a little bit of news about expansion. And it all stems from comments made by Commissioner Greg Sain. So pull up a chair, sit back, relax, and let's talk. What is up, college sports fans, Big 12 fans, and fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos. Welcome into another edition of Coos's Corner. Pull that chair up and let me serve you up this shot of top shelf college football content. On tap today at Coos's Corner, Yes, I know we're back on conference expansion. I told you I was getting tired of talking about it. But this is something I felt worthy to talk about. Greg Sankey recently did an interview with Paul Feinbaum and talked about conference expansion. And I haven't really seen it widespread across media outlets. The only one I've seen cover it so far has been Josh Pate on his show, Late Kick with Josh Pate. I'm going to put a link to that episode in the description box because he does a much better job than I do even talking about this. But my angle of this is a little different. I want to kind of give my thoughts on it after I give you the comments of what Greg Sankey said, kind of what he talked about. Then I want to give you my thoughts and tell you where I think he's going with these comments. Well, first of all, he's talked about how Texas and Oklahoma, he didn't poach them. They came to the SEC. They wanted the SEC. He claims he's not going out and poaching teams. As a matter of fact, he said this exact quote. We've done it well geographically. We've done it well for media positioning, and I'm not a recruiter, and I respect my colleagues, end quote. So he's saying, look, I'm not poaching these teams. They came to us. He also talked about how he never intended to go past 16 teams, and he only basically added Texas and Oklahoma because the opportunity presented itself, and he it was basically too good of an opportunity to pass up to add those two brands to the conference, and I totally understand that. I totally get it. But then he went on to talk about how some of his fellow commissioners, or he didn't mention commissioners, he talked about how these other conferences are talking about further expansion, talking about getting up to as many as 20 teams, and whatnot. And he didn't seem like he was real happy that they were doing that and wasn't really in agreement with it, and because he doesn't think it's good for the sport. And he went on to talk about how they need to work together. And I'm going to give you a quote that talks about that. And here's his quote from this interview. This is Greg Sankey's words. I understand that people have different motivations and different interests, but we need a time of settling and a time of collaboration, and we need a time beyond just collaboration and cooperation because we have some really important challenges ahead of us that require us to work together. Hey, I'm not simply sitting in my glass house throwing stones. We've added members, but I think we all have to be careful in how we proceed and thoughtful in how we communicate, end quote. First off, I respect the fact he talked about not throwing stones because they added members. And I don't necessarily disagree with him about these other items that they do need to work together. And some of the items he mentioned specifically later in the interview was NIL, state laws, litigation that's, that they're facing right now. And then we all know the other things they're facing, you know, the transfer portal and all this other stuff, right? And he's right. It will be easier if they work together. You know, you've got five power conferences that are with teams spread out across the entire country. They'll be more likely to succeed at getting these NCAA changes made or these uh, laws changed or passed if they all work together. I agree with that. So think about it this way. Maybe Greg Sankey and the SEC would actually benefit from not expanding. If you become a super conference of 20 to 24 teams, let's say, most of those teams, especially in the SEC's case, are in one geographic region of the country. But if you've got all all five power conferences, or heck, even all 10 FBS conferences working together, you cover the entire country. You're much more likely to get rules changed or laws passed if you've got every state in the country, or at least most of the states in the country, represented here, right? And most of the teams in the NCAA represented. You're going to have a lot better chance of succeeding, and I think that's what Greg Sankey's kind of saying here in a nutshell. For, for example, The whole law about potentially having to pay players as employees. Okay, the SEC is making $60 million a team per year on their new TV deal, right? When it kicks in, it'll be $60 million per year per team. A 
ballpark. I'm ballparking this number. That number, that money's not going to go as far if you have to start paying your football players or if you have to start paying your basketball players or whoever. So, and, and think, think about if you're the Big 12, the Pac-12, or the ACC, who's, who's making half that or even less than half that. They're not even going to be able to afford to do it. They're, they might have to drop athletic programs. So maybe Greg Sankey's got a point here. Maybe it is best for these conferences not to expand and work together on trying to get some of these things done for the betterment of the sport, if that's really his intent. And maybe that's why the Big Ten presidents have come out and said they're not for any more expansion now that they have USC and UCLA. Because they they look at this the same way as Greg Sankey does. It's definitely something to think about. But after I thought about this more, I think Greg Sankey might have ulterior motives here. And here's my message to you, Mr. Sankey. I know Greg Sankey's probably not listening to this, but if he were, this is what I would tell him. The thing is, Greg, that's easy for you to say. Because you're sitting there with some of the top brands in the sport. Texas, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, Auburn, just to name a few. All of them making at least double what the schools in the ACC, the Big 12, and the Pac-12 are making or will be making. They're all trying to catch up with you. So, of course, they may want to expand to help close that revenue gap if that's what it takes to do so. Now, I know you had to do what was best for your conference by letting Texas and Oklahoma in. I get it. But maybe you should have thought about that. Maybe the school presidents should have thought about that before they let them in and before they signed a $60 million per team media deal. So, in essence, Greg, it was you and your conference that started the ball rolling on this stuff. You started the chaos, man. And do you really think, Greg, that these other conferences are just going to sit back and these other teams in these conferences are just going to sit back and do nothing and let you and the Big Ten just continue to separate further and further financially? They're trying to compete with you on the field. Why would they? They can't do that. They've got to do what they can to try to compete with you. And if you think they weren't going to do that, I think you're naive. But I know you're smarter. I know you're a smart guy, Greg, and I know you probably know better than that. You probably knew the tidal waves this, that would cause, and you did it anyway. And I'm not saying just you, but your conference, your school presidents. You, they knew better. They're smart people. Okay? Now, what do, what do I think the SEC's endgame is? Do I really think they have the betterment of the sport in mind? I'm not so, I'm not so sure of that. I'm not convinced of that. I think the SEC wants things to remain calm for now. But I think once they get the legislation passed that they want to get passed and some NCAA rule changes they want to get, may want to get changed, obviously with the help of the other Power Five conferences and commissioners, then once they get all that achieved, then I think they were going to want to go out and add other teams because they will have everything accomplished that they need to accomplish. They will have all worked together to achieve a common goal. Then they'll go out and add the Florida States, the Clemsons, whoever else they might want to add, the North Carolinas. Or or they could just be biding their time, waiting for the ACC to blow up, waiting for schools like Florida State, Clemson, whoever, to try to get out of that grant of rights deal in the ACC. Then they'll go, then they'll go add more teams. So was he being honest when he said they weren't planning to add more teams right now? I think he was. But I think in the future, they still will. I think down the road, the SEC is still going to be adding more teams. I think they're just biding their time and waiting on the right moment to do so. So let me know what you think in the comments section, Coos's Corner family. What do you think about this situation? Do you think the SEC will indeed add more teams? Do you think Greg Sankey was just being politically correct and saying the right thing in this interview so as to not spill his conference's strategy? Or do you think he was being 100% totally honest and transparent, and, hey, we don't want to add more teams. And another interesting quote he said in this interview that I think uh, was kind of a blow or a jab, so to speak, at the Big Ten was this. We will be the 16-team super conference starting in 2024. So he's already saying the SEC is a super conference. And I guess he's kind of right based on the money they're going to be making. But he says they're going to be the, and he stressed the word the, super conference, 16-team super conference. Was that a little subtle jab to the Big Ten? I think it could have been. 
I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Do you think that was a jab at the Big Ten as well? Also, guys, if you want to support me financially here on the channel, there's a couple ways you can do that. Check out my merch store. Link's at the top of the description box. Get you a shirt or a ball cap or a trucker's hat or whatever that says, proud member of the Truck Stop Conference, maybe. Big 12. If you want to get one of those items, link's in the top of my description box. Also, you can get uh, items with my channel logo on it. You can get items that say Bouncer across the front. You can get, there are several other designs I have to choose from. Check it out there in my merch store. You can also check out the Fanatics link in my description box as well. Do your Fanatic shopping with that link if you want to buy your favorite sports team apparel. That link will get you into the site. You don't have to buy that item that's shown. That just gets you into the store and anything you buy from then on out. I will get a small commission and there are some things, some items up to 65% off with promo code RANK. Promo code rank, you get up to 65% off, okay, on certain items. Use the link in my description box. You can also hit the heart thanks option right below, the little heart with a dollar sign in it, make a one-time donation, or you can join my channel, become a member of Kuz's Corner, take advantage of the perks that has to offer, like early content, special members-only content. I'll let you join me on live streams occasionally. That's a members-only benefit. I'll give you special shout-outs occasionally, things like that. So take advantage of that while, while it's, where you have the opportunity. And if you want to support me free, there's four ways you can do that. Absolutely free, absolutely easy. You can hit the thumbs up button below, which is a like. You can share it out with your friends. You can drop a comment below. Or you can subscribe to my channel here. Help me get to my ultimate goal of 5,000 subscribers here on Cougar's Corner. With that being said, I really appreciate you tuning in to this episode. Until the next one, Q Country Roads. Oh,